Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nerdy 30s Review. I'm Jason, today we've got a brand new review of a brand new graphics card, one that kind of swept the nation upon launch. Actually, it was sold out day one and stayed sold out for about a week or two afterward. Obviously, I'm talking about the RX 7800 XT from AMD. The model that I personally went with was the ASRock Steel Series White. Uh, the reason I went with it, outside of its amazing aesthetics, I actually at first, I kind of poo-pooed the uh, the digitized camo because back when I was in the army, like they were just starting to roll that out and I thought it was the dumbest looking thing I'd ever seen. But uh, it grew on me and the RGB is only on the fans, super easy to disable. So if you want to go with a more low key setup, it, it sits in there nicely. But primarily the reason that I went for it was because at Newegg where I got it, it was 519. So it was just 20 bucks over the MSRP of 499 and I bought it specifically for review purposes. I, I wanted to see how an aftermarket car that was really close to MSRP performed and I'm really excited to share those results with you. Just preliminarily, the things that I noticed is it ran really, really cool and quiet up to a point. So once you reach that 70% fan utilization, this thing has a tendency to get pretty loud. That said, it never really under just standard workloads unless I was really overclocking it or really pushing an aggressive fan curve. It it wasn't bad at all. It, it rarely ever reached that 70% uh, percent utilization. So yeah, outside of that, just from a hardware perspective, I really liked the look of it. There was no problems with cooling. There was no problems um, with its architecture, with its with its build quality. I think it's got a great metal backplate. The rest of the shroud is plastic. The fans are a, a clear plastic. And like I said, they get a little bit loud. We've got our five heat pipes running along the fins. Really solid construction. One of the boons about going with an ASRock GPU like this is you do get a three year warranty. So that was big plus for me. And on the software side of things, honestly moving over from the ARC A770, the Intel software driver issues that I ran into there, it was like a breath of fresh air, if I'm being honest. And I never thought I would say that going over to adrenaline software would feel like a breath of fresh air, but here we are, it's a crazy world. But that said, I did run into one issue with the drivers and when I very first got the card installed and I started benchmarking it, I noticed that in a lot of games and uh, two synthetic benchmarks, it would really commonly crash. And when I say crash, I would get a white screen uh, across my display. And then about 10, 15 seconds later, my actual, the, the whole system would reboot. Fresh, you know, windows closed unexpectedly. So I looked into it. I swapped out the power supply and GPU. Uh, it occurred with a, it recurred with a new power supply and it stopped when I moved back over to the ARC A770. So it was pretty sure it was tied to this card. So I got in touch with ASRock support. And the first thing they said was update your BIOS. So my BIOS was about six weeks old, but there was a newer version. So just something to keep in mind. If you do go with the 7800 XT, make sure that your BIOS is up to current version because that did largely resolve the issue with the, the random reboots. It did still occur a couple times after uh, Cyberpunk 2020 or sorry, 2077 patch 2.0, which was their Phantom Liberty patch. It occurred once in like a, a marathon, um, a, a marathon gaming session when I was really pushing the, the benchmarks and also when I was running just like the in-game benchmark to test some ray tracing. And but outside of that, I didn't have any problems. So yeah, like big kudos for just clean driver support. Everything ran pretty smooth outside of that one bug. I had no other issues with artifacts or games crashing, just solid adrenaline software. So kudos to AMD there. But yeah, I, I think that's really all I've got as far as first impressions. This was a great 1440p, like like cresting the 4K tier, but we'll get into that in the benchmarks. But yeah, we'll go ahead and dive into overall architecture really quick, then system specs, 
benchmarks and then my final thoughts. But yeah, really excited uh, to, to have this opportunity. If you enjoy this kind of content, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. It helps me more than you know, and it just incentivizes me to keep these coming. I've got another review that's already locked and loaded, so I'm excited to get that one out to you as well. But yeah, let's, let's just get into it. All right, before I go ahead and get into system configuration and benchmarks, let's just do a quick dive into the nuts and bolts of what a 7800 XT is. Now, this is Navi 32 architecture, which leverages both TSMC's five and six nanometer processes as far as the chip's concerned. It has 3,840 cores, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 running on a 256 bus. Now, the difference between a stock and the ASRock Steel Legend is this one comes out of the box overclocked. Its base clock is 2,213 megahertz and its boost is 2,520. So nothing outlandish. It's, it's a nice conservative overclock, but it is one that performs well and does so cool. Now, the only other thing to really notice as far as like the overall physicality of the card is we've got uh, five heat pipes here along the heat fins. It requires two eight pin uh, power connectors. We utilize um, three Display point, display port 2.1 ports, as well as one HDMI 2.1 port. We have a nice metal backplate, as previously stated. The overall dimensions of the card are, for length, we've got 304 millimeters from tip to port. From width, or I guess it's looking like height from here to here, that is 100 and. 31, yeah, 131 millimeters, and then width, uh, so I guess height, which would be thickness here, that is just 56 millimeters. And overall weight is 1,242 grams. It's a relatively light card, and that's really all there is to it. I think it's a great card as far as how it fit. Uh, I didn't need a bracket for it. It held up on its own with the, the case screws. So yeah, that's all there really is to say about it. So why don't we just go ahead and get into system configurations and then hit those benchmarks. All right, before we go ahead and dive into benchmarks, why don't we familiarize ourselves with the test bench configuration? So for the processor, I've got a Ryzen 9 7950X3D running on an MSI X670E carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. For RAM, we've got 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z Neo running at 6,000 megahertz. For the graphics card, obviously we're running the ASRock Steel Legend RX 7800 XT. The driver version is current uh, at time of recording, 23.9.3. All benchmarks were performed on this driver version. For the SSD, we're currently running a Samsung 990 Pro 2 terabyte M.2. The case is a Fractal North chalk white mesh. The CPU cooler is a deep cool LS520 white, but as you can see, I've replaced the stock fans with two Noctua 120mm high static pressure fans. Intake, I've got two Arctic 140mm PWM fans. And exhaust is a Noctua NF S12 120mm fan. Operating system is Windows 11, current version. We're going to start things off with synthetic benchmarks, and I want to preface a couple of things really quick here. So firstly, these are going to be our only results with stock settings and a stable 2950MHz overclock on core. The in-game benchmarks are all going to be stock. And the results that we're seeing here are actually averages of two, sorry, three separate runs and rounded up to the next whole number. Starting things off with Firestrike Extreme, which is DirectX 11 at max settings 1440p, we've got a stock score of 242.55 and an overclocked score of 25.510. Time Spy is DirectX 12 max settings 1440p, and we had a score of 183.61 at stock. At that nice stable overclock, we had over 19,000 at 19,277, so I was really happy to see that. Port Royal is a ray, ray tracing test, so stock, uh, we had a score of uh, 10,520, and we didn't really expect to see much in the way of overclocked bonuses there, so the overclock score is 11179. For Speedway, this is DirectX 12 Ultimate, which includes ray tracing. We had a stock score of 3,897 and an overclock score of 4,265. Honestly, I have to say these were pretty impressive benchmarks. The uh, the overclock did seem to, to get us some substantial performance uplift, and it's, it's just good to see uh, a $500 graphics card performing this well. So moving on over to in-game benchmarks, we're going to kick things off with Control, and this is DirectX 12. I went ahead and did 
full uh, benchmarks with 1440p and 4K across the board to kind of give you an idea of, of what you'd be paying for if you went with this graphics card. So 1440p, max settings, no ray tracing. We have 138.6 frames per second on average with 1% lows right at 60, and that's 59.6. Moving on up to 4K, same settings. We have 57.5, so just right up at the cusp of 60 frames per second and nice tight 1% lows at 47.5. Both resolutions were a pleasure to play at. Why don't we go ahead and move on over to The Last of Us, which is a PS5 port, or I guess it was PS4 too. Um, but 1440p, max settings, no ray tracing. We have uh, an average frame rate of 94.6 with 1% lows at 62.2. Moving over to 4K, we had a, a little decrease there at 53.9 average with a nice tight 1% low at 39.9. Both resolutions were a dream to play at. I personally don't need that solid 60 frames per second if we can keep it tight at around 40 to 50, so I had no issues at all 4K in this particular title. Why don't we go ahead and move on over to Forspoken, which is a, a little bit more taxing title. Um, but this game performed, or this graphics card performed really, really well. 1440p, max settings, no ray tracing. We had an average score of 92.4 at 1440p. And the 1% lows, it's just, I, I don't, I, I think it's just this game. <laughs> the last three graphics cards I played on it had just terrible 1% lows. So not spectacular, but they were a lot less noticeable for the 7800 XT uh, over the ARC A770 that I just recently benchmarked. Moving out of 4K, we're right at 60 frames per second, 59.3, but those 1% lows are pretty darn low at 15.8. Moving on over to Ghostwire Tokyo, one of my personally just favorite titles to, to play just to enjoy. 1440p, max settings, no ray tracing. We had 129.9 frames per second with 69.1 in the 1% lows. Moving up to 4K, we were right at uh, just under 60 frames per second at 58.1 and 1% lows at 35.5. For the 4K resolution, I feel like I ought to have just a little addendum here. And that is, there was a phenomenal amount of variance in overall average frames per second based on where you were. So if you're outside roaming the city, then honestly, it was closer to 70 frames per second on average. But when you start getting into buildings and structures like I am here, where there's a roof and walls, it actually dips to around 40 with pretty low 1% lows. But overall, it was a really smooth performance at, six, at 4K. Moving things over to Hogwarts Legacy, which is just a beautiful title at uh, both resolutions. And honestly, digging this one out and really just, just playing for a while just had me all nostalgic for when it first released. So I'm actually replaying it right now. But 1440p max settings, no ray tracing. We had a solid 100 frames per second at 100.2, 1% lows at 49.2. 4K, we're just under 60 frames per second again at 56.2 with 33.7 in the 1% lows. 4K, I did notice some pop-ins and it wasn't too bad and there were stutters in the high foliage areas as we're kind of seeing here. But the, outside of that, like in caves, in the castle, everywhere else you go, it was just butter smooth at 1440p and 4K. Moving over to Spider-Man Remastered, a phenomenally optimized game. We had a score of 139, or sorry, 131.9 frames per second at 1440p max settings with really, really uh, appreciable 1% lows at 86.2. 4K is still ultimately playable at 91.5 frames per second with 1% lows above 60 frames per second at 60.7. This, it's just a great title. It's a beautiful title. This card runs it really well. I've got no complaints when it comes to, to this particular game on the 7800 XT. Moving over to A Plague Tale Requiem, it's it's definitely a more demanding game than some of the other ones we've just went over, but 1440p max settings, no ray tracing. We had 87.9 on average with 1% lows at 58.2. 4K, it really kind of took a hit there, so we didn't quite get 50 frames per second at 47.4, but 1% lows remain nice and tight at 35.1. Moving on over to one of my favorite games. It was my game of the year in 2021, and I still, if, if I don't know what I want to play, I'm playing Returnal. 
So this game performed phenomenally well at both resolutions. So 1440p, we had 124.3 on average with a 1% low at 73.7. 4K max settings, no compromise, well, no ray tracing, uh, but we had over 60 frames per second at 63.7 and nice tight 1% lows at 43.9. There were some stuttering in high traffic areas where there's a bunch of obelites on the ground and a bunch of enemies flying around. As you can see, I'm using the most high rate of fire weapon I could to do the benchmarking, just, just try, try to get as many pixels on the screen as I could and it just chugged right along. The 7800 XT performed really well in Returnal. Moving on over to Baldur's Gate 3, it's a less graphically demanding title and so the 7800 XT had no problem at all. 1440p max settings, we were at 147.6 frames per second on average with 59.9 in the 1% lows, and then moving up to 4K well above 60 at 84.1 and 32.6 in the 1% lows. This is an isometric top-down kind of game. Even in the cinematics, however, it was still really, really smooth at both resolutions. Moving on over to Cyberpunk 2077, this is I, I do want to preface this, this is the 2.0 patch, so most current version of Cyberpunk 2077 here. This is uh, the Phantom Liberty patch. This isn't Phantom Liberty content that you're seeing here, it's just Night City, but 1440p, max settings, no ray tracing, we're at 95.3 and 78.2 in the 1% lows, just a crazy smooth performance out of this graphics card, I loved every second of it. And 4K, we're almost right there at 52.3 at average, and then 35.3 in the 1% lows. This was a bit more stuttery at 4K. Truthfully, the frame time graph was just kind of all over the place, depending on where we were, or if things got really hectic in a firefight. But otherwise, like if, if you want to throw just a little ultra quality upscaling on it, I think FSR2 is supported on this. Like You could easily hit that 60 and, and be just a great performance. Finally, it wouldn't be a benchmark suite if we didn't have Shadow of the Tomb Raider in there. So 1440p max settings, we are at a blisteringly fast 158.9 frames per second with 78.7 in the 1% lows and 4K 87.1 with 49.4 in the 1% lows. So honestly, this just my experience with this card and I know like I don't have a 6800 XT to compare it to but this generation the cards that i've played on so far this one is just so leagues ahead of my expectations based on the previous releases of this generation and i am overwhelmingly impressed with it and i had no problems outside of the few driver bugs that i mentioned at the beginning games played incredibly smooth there really weren't any driver issues outside of the ones stated before but yeah absolutely amazing card so why don't we go ahead and just move on over to price and final thoughts okay so wrapping things up obviously the last thing we'll want to talk about is price now this particular model the asrock steel legend is 519 and that's 20 bucks over msrp so just to dispel that aftermarket cooling out of the box overclock three-year warranty and the aesthetics on this card alone hello beautiful it, yeah, non-issue, like 20 bucks over MSRP, yeah, 100% would recommend. So the question then becomes, is the 7800 XT worth it at 499 Is this a $500 graphics card? If we were to look at analysis of all their graphics cards, current generation, yes, 100%. This is in, I won't say it's a league of its own, because as the 4070 continues to drop, then there might be a competitive discussion to have. And you can pit it against previous generations. So like the 6800, the 6800 XT, maybe even a 3070 Ti or 3080, and you probably get comparable performance. But this is current generation, AV1 encoding. And if you just want to game at 1440p, no questions asked. And honestly, like knocking on the door at 60 frames per second, 4K, like this is a compelling purchase. I have no qualms, no issues at all recommending this particular card or the 7800 XT as a whole or its currently listed MSRP. That doesn't mean that I'm okay with the current state of GPU prices. It just means living in the world that we live in, this is a good price. This is a good graphics card. 
I really enjoyed playing on it. I really enjoyed making this video. So if you really enjoyed this content, if you really enjoyed this discussion that I hope we'll continue to have, then please feel free to leave a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me more than you know. Hope you know how much I appreciate all the interactions we've got. So yeah, I just wanna say thank you again for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.